Hey, we're going to do a little video here about how to solve a systems of equation or a system of equations, I should say, using matrices. So let me hop on over to the example I have. And it's right here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's maximize the, here we go. All right, so got my little Mio pad here. It's ready to roll. I'm going to show you how to transfer this into a matrix equation. So we've already talked about how to solve a matrix equation if we're using this format, where we do the inverse of A and times by B. And honestly, this is just an extension of that. This is another problem almost identical to that. So what we've got to do is take our system of equations and we've got to translate that into a matrix. What you're going to do is create a matrix using the coefficients in your equations on the left hand side of the equal sign. So if we were to literally just drop these x's and y's, what coefficients would we have? We would have a negative one, on the first row and a negative five for y. Then we would have a positive three for x on the bottom row and a negative five again for this y coefficient. So it's just pretty much dropping the x's and y's using the coefficients. All right, so that's like our A matrix. Then what does this get multiplied by? Well, you know, it really is still an x, but since we're in context here with the system of equations, what I wanna do is show you really what we would multiply this by. Now remember when you multiply matrices, we multiply rows by columns. So how can we fix this matrix here to where when we multiplied it, we actually got that first equation? Well, we would need X here and Y here. So negative one times X plus negative five times Y, that would be the multiplication there we would need. So that is one way that you could represent that X matrix because we are finding a X and Y ordered pair as our solution for this. Remember, a system of equations is really, I'll explain it in just a second. Let me go ahead and get this written down. Um, it's really just graphing two lines and wherever they intersect, that is the so, uh, solution for that system. All right, so back in like Algebra 1, you probably did that. All right, but we don't want to graph this. We don't want to get it in slope-intercept form and do all that stuff. So what we're doing is solving it with a matrix. So what I did was I used the what the equations were equal to to also make a matrix, a two-by-one matrix. So we've got our coefficients from the problem. These are the variables that were used, and then we have the numbers they were set equal to. Okay, so this is no different than what we did in class, we're just going to find the inverse of A and multiply it by B. Alrighty, so let's go over here and find the inverse of A. I'll do that over here. Alright, so your inverse is going to be 1 over the determinant of our matrix here. So that's 5 minus negative 15. 5 minus negative 15. So that becomes 20. So we've got 1 over 20 there. Okay, now remember when you're doing the inverse, we switch these elements, A and D. The signs on B and C change, but the elements do not change positions. So that's what we're looking at right there. Okie dokie. So let's distribute that 1 over 20 through. And let's say negative 5 times 1 over 20 will end up reducing to a negative 1 fourth. And then 5 times a 1 over 20 will be a positive 1 fourth. Bottom row here, a negative 3 times 1 over 20 would be negative 3 over 20. And then lastly, 1 over 20 times negative 1 would be negative 1 over 20. So there's your inverse. Okay, and we always want to use the inverse first. So negative 1 fourth. All this good stuff comes over. All right, and we're going to multiply that by this B matrix, which we are using negative 3 and 9. All righty, so remember when you multiply matrices, you multiply rows by columns. So when we multiply 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1, 
we're going to get a two by one matrix. So let's set this up. All right, here we go. We're going to multiply row one times column one to get that first element. So let's see, negative one four times negative three. That'd be a positive three fourths plus one fourth times nine would be nine over four. I just kind of like to leave these fractions because I don't have to get out a calculator, but you can do it with a calculator. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, now let's do row two times column one to get this element. So that would be a negative 27 over 20 plus a negative one over, excuse me, a negative nine over 20. All right, so let's see what's going to happen here. That doesn't seem right, does it? No, it's because it's not. Oh, Miss Brown, let's erase. What did I do wrong? All right, let's see. I didn't multiply that row by that row, did I? All right, so I got to do negative 3 over 20 times negative 3. That would be a positive 9 over 20. I'm sorry. And then negative. 120 <laughs> times, now I'm being negative 9 over 20. Okay, I got it right now. Okay, so I'm bragging about not using a calculator, not bragging, but I was talking about that and then I didn't do it right. Okay, if you add these, you get 12 over 4. What's 12 over 4? 3. And then if you add these on the bottom, you get 0. And that's right. So your answer would be the matrix 3, 0. Now, if we correspond that with the way we wrote it over here, that means x is 3. And y is zero. And what that means is that if we graph these, that's where those points would intersect. 